Hello, this is the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this episode, we're going to create a Bomberman clone. So Bomberman's a game where you're moving around in an area and you try to set these bombs and try to blow up things without blowing yourself up. So in this game, we're trying to put these bombs near the crabs, but we can't touch the crabs, and also we can't blow ourselves up either. You have to be kind of tricky, and if you get too close to your own bomb, you'll lose the game. So go ahead and click on Create, which will open up a brand new blank editor. So the first thing we're going to do is shrink this cat down a little bit, because this cat is way too big. So click on the Shrink tool here at the top, and then click on the cat several times. Maybe get the cat down to about this size. And now we're going to have to add code that will let us use the WASD keys, the WASD keys, to move the cat up and down and left and right. But before that, let's click on the I button right here. Let's rename this sprite to player, and then close that. And now let's add the code for this. So first in the brown events category, grab this when green flag clicked block. Then what we want to do first is set the rotation style of this sprite to left right. And we can do that in the dark blue motion category. Right here at the bottom there's a block that says set rotation style and just leave it at left right. We'll have the cat pointing in the 90 degree direction, which is the right direction. So what the left right rotation style does is that normally you can change the rotation right here. You can see that when the cat is able to rotate all around, when it's facing to the left, the cat's upside down, and we don't really want that. So instead, we'll set the left-right rotation style, which means that the cat is always facing either right uh, to the right or strictly to the left. And after that, we'll add a forever loop from the yellow control section. Grab this forever loop. And now we just have to add a whole bunch of if statements inside here that check when the player is holding down the W, A, S, or D keys. So grab an if block, and then in the light blue sensing category, there's a block that says key space pressed. We can fit that inside the if block. And we'll just change this to, we'll cover the A first. So W will be up, and A will be left, and D will be right, and S will be down. So A is left. So in this case, we want the cat to face to the left and then start moving to the left. So go to the dark blue motion category, grab this point and direction block, and this time click on the triangle to set it to negative 90 degrees to face to the left. And then we're going to change the x position of the cat. The x axis is the left right axis. We'll change x by negative 4. So be sure to get this change x block and not the set x block. So we'll change x by negative 4, so negative numbers for changing the x will move the sprite to the left. And then also just to have a little animation there, we'll grab this next costume block from the purple looks category. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag and hold down the A key. That's pretty good. So let's click on stop, and now let's do a little shortcut for the D key. We can just right click on this if block and then select duplicate, and that will give us all of those exact same blocks. We can just put it in at the bottom, and then make some changes for the right direction. So this will be when the D key is being pressed. We want the cat to go to the right, so facing to the right at 90 degrees, and then also changing X by a positive number to move to the right. So we can test that out. Green flag, so now I can move to the left and the right. And that next costume block changes and animates the cat's costume. because so the cat starts off with these two costumes, so next costume just switches back and forth between them. Doing the up and down directions will be fairly similar. Let's go to the orange or the yellow control section. Grab this if block, then in the light blue sensing category, grab a key pressed block, 
and we'll just say w. So we aren't going to change the direction that the cat is facing. Instead, we'll just have the change y by block. And so since w key is moving the cat up, we want to change this by a positive number. So change y by 4. And then we could add a next costume block right here as well. And then we'll do the same thing for the S key except moving down. So just go ahead and right click on this if block and select duplicate. And then change this to S. And change this to negative four to move the cat down. So now when we click on the green flag, we should be able to move in all directions. And in fact, if you hold down two buttons at the same time, you can move in a diagonal, but something weird happens. The cat's now kind of ice skating. It's not animating properly. And the reason that happens is because when we hold down two of these buttons, we're executing one next costume block and then a second next costume block, which just keeps the cat cost, the cat sprite on the same costume. You can see right now, just moving in one direction does one next costume, but then the combination of the two next costume blocks results in the cat costume just being set to the exact same one before. So we want to add an if block around these next costume blocks so that they don't happen if the A or D keys are being pressed. So let's add an if block around this next costume block. And we only want this next costume block to run if the A key or the D key is not being pressed. So let's go to the operator section and grab this not block. Then grab an or block as well to fit inside the not block. Let's go to the sensing category and grab two of those key spaced pressed. We'll just change this to A and then the second one can be changed to D. So if the A key or the D key are not being pressed, then we will run that next costume. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and just add it right here, get rid of this next costume. And then let's test this out. Click on the green flag. You can see moving up and down in one direction is working and then when we move at a diagonal it's animated correctly and that's because we're running this next costume block or this next costume block but in the case of holding down the W key this next costume only runs if the A or D keys are not being held down. Alright so let's start drawing in the background. Click on the stage and let's go to the backdrops. So if you remember from the actual program the backdrop was pretty simple. It was just this green background with these blue squares that were sort of walls or maybe water that the cat couldn't run on. So we'll just change this. Use the paint bucket fill tool. Make everything green and then just start adding in some blue rectangles. So I'll select the rectangle tool. Oops. I'm going to click on undo. What I really want. Oh. Fill that in. What I really want is this filled in rectangle, not just the outline. So I can just draw that in. Be sure that the cat will be able to fit inside of these little hallways that we're creating in between the blue spaces. So rectangle tool. All right, and then we'll draw some darker green X's just on the ground for where the crabs will come out. So we'll just draw four of these X's here. Well, maybe I'll just increase the thickness of this line a little bit. So when we run this script, you'll notice that the cat's able to move over the blue areas. 
which is not something we want. We want the cat to be blocked by these areas. And we'll do that by adding code that detects whenever the cat's touching this blue color, as soon as the cat walks over that blue area, the cat will instantly move back a step. So it'll look like the cat can't walk into it. So let's go to the player sprite again. I'm gonna click on this arrow button to give myself more room for the code area. And let's add an if block inside of this if key a pressed block. It's right here at the very bottom after the next costume. So what we want to have happen is if the cat is touching this blue color, then the cat moves back in the opposite direction of this change x by block. So let's go to the light blue sensing category and then grab this block that says touching color. And we can set the color by clicking on this color square and then selecting the color we want it to be. When the player holds down A, the cat's going to move to the left by changing X by negative 4, but if they're now touching the light blue of the walls right here, then we want it to move in the opposite direction to undo that. So let's go to the dark blue motion category, grab this change X by block, and we'll just set that to 4. Let's test this out. This will only work going in the left direction, but clicking on the green flag, we can move around, and then if we try to walk to the left, the cat gets stopped. And that's because as soon as the cat's touching the light blue area, it undoes that move by moving back. So we can do this for the D key pressed. We'll just right click on the if block and select duplicate. Except here, in order to undo the change x by 4, we'll have to have change x by negative 4. And we can do the same thing for the W key, just hit duplicate, and put it right there. Except we don't want change x, we want change y, so get rid of that change x button, or block, and add a change y by block instead. And since W moves y by 4 steps, we want to undo that by, move, by changing y by negative 4 steps. And then just duplicate it for the S key. And make sure it gets inside of this if key S pressed if block. And change that to 4. So let's test this out. It, the cat should be blocked in every single direction. Yep, I can't walk up or down or left or right. Yeah. Perfect. Might want to shrink this cat down just one more, just so the cat can fit in between the corridors. So just to ensure that the cat never starts off inside one of these blue areas at the very beginning of the game, I'm just going to set the cat right here, and then in the dark blue motion category, grab this go to x, y block, and the numbers that are inside here for x and y will be set to the current position of the cat. So once I've set the cat at where I want the cat to start on each game, I can grab this go to x, y block and put it at the very top. Okay, next let's start creating the bomb sprite, and we'll do that by clicking on this paintbrush button that says paint new sprite. So to draw this bomb, it'll be pretty simple. We'll just make a circle and just make it, say, uh, have a black outline. And when you're drawing a circle, you can hold down the shift key and that'll automatically form a perfect circle. And this bomb shouldn't be big at all. Ooh, that's still way too big. So I'm going to use this select tool and then drag over everything grab one of these corners and just shrink it down. Yeah, that's a good size for, for this bomb. So I'll turn this to the dark gray color and fill that in. Maybe just zoom in a little bit and use the uh, line drawing tool. Let's see, the fuse will be sticking out from this size. So I'll just draw in a little bit right there. Fill that in. Maybe have like a little white fuse coming out. Make this a skinnier line. And 
and then have a shiny part on the metal bomb surface. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll well, maybe maybe shrink this down a little bit more. So use the select tool, drag over everything to select it, and then use this corner to shrink it down a little. That looks a lot better. Okay, finally, click on this set costume center and set the costume center to the middle of that circle. So right about here. And I'm gonna change this costume name to Bomb Costume. So we actually need to add a whole bunch of graphics for the explosion and we could draw those ourselves, but instead let's download some pre-made explosion images. You can go to the inventwithscratch.com website and then click on the downloads link and down here you can see several bomb explosion images. So just right click on each image and click on save link as or save image as and save each of these explosions to the desktop. So the first one is named explosion1.png, the second one is explosion2.png, and just go ahead and download all of these images. So you should have eight explosion images. Now go back to your scratch editor and click on this upload button that says upload costume from file. You can actually select all of these image, image files all at once by clicking on explosion1.png and then holding down the shift key on your keyboard and selecting the last explosion, explosion 8, and then clicking OK or open and this will upload all of the explosion images. Now these will all be out of order a little bit so we need to rearrange them so that explosion 1 comes first followed by explosion 2 and then explosion 3. So go ahead and sort these into the correct order. All right that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and open the info panel here and rename this sprite to bomb. And then go ahead and right click on this sprite and select duplicate. And for the new bomb2 sprite, rename that to explosion1. And for the explosion, we don't want that original bomb costume. So go ahead and click on the bomb costume and then click on this X to delete it. So the ex so the bomb sprite has that bomb costume followed by the explosion whereas explosion1 has just the explosion sprite, uh, the explosion costumes. So if you remember in the original game, I was able to press the space key to set this bomb, and then there's a slight delay, and then it starts exploding with these multiple explosions. So let's create that here. Let's go to the bomb sprite and then the script section. And the very first thing we're going to have it do at the very start of the program when the green flag is clicked is hide itself. So go to the purple look section and select hide. And that's because we don't want the bomb showing up right at the start of the game. We only want it to show up when the player has pressed the space key. So in the brown events category, grab this when space key pressed block. What we want the bomb to do when the space key is pressed is move to wherever the player is, make sure it's set to that first costume, the bomb costume, not the explosions, and then show up. So let's see, let's go to the dark blue motion category, grab this go to block, we'll change that to player, so it goes to wherever the player is. Then let's go to the purple look section, grab this switch costume block, and make sure that it's on the bomb costume, and then finally it can show itself because it's finally at the right costume and at the right place on the screen. So then we need a short delay before the bomb explodes. So let's go to the control section, grab this wait block, and change this to wait three seconds. So we can test this out so far. Uh, let's just click on the green flag. I can press the space key and it just sets the bomb there. We haven't added the code that goes through the explosion costumes next. So in order to add those explosion animations, we're going to need a next costume block from the purple looks category. So we actually want several next costume blocks because we want this to go to the next costume, explosion one, and then the next costume, explosion two, and so on and so on, until finally it gets to explosion eight. 
So we could have several of these next costume blocks, but instead, this will be a lot simpler. Go to the yellow control section and grab this repeat block. And just set this to eight. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag. And after three seconds, it goes through all of those next costumes. That was actually pretty quick. Oh, and of course, after it's finished that explosion animation, we should have it hide itself. So go to the purple look section and grab this hide. Now also, if you remember in the original game, the bomb not only exploded once, but had these sort of secondary explosions. That's kind of a nice effect, so we want that for our game. And that's why we have these explosion sprites. So we're going to create all the code for this explosion one, and then I'll duplicate this sprite and its code for an explosion two and explosion three sprite. So first we're going to have the original bomb sprite, after it's done exploding, broadcast a message that says explosion chain, which will cause these explosions to start that chain reaction of other explosions. So go to the brown events category, we're going to grab this broadcast and wait block, and broadcast a new message, we'll just call it explosion chain. We'll have this explosion one sprite run code in response to that. So we'll have a when I receive block. So when I receive explosion chain, that'll tell this sprite to also start going through all of those next costumes. So in this case, we only want it to go through seven next costumes. Go from one to two, to three to four, to five to six, to seven to eight. Let's grab this repeat block, change this to seven. And then in the look section, grab this next costume. Oh, but of course, at the very start, we want it to set itself to explosion one. Also, we want it to go to the wherever the player is, or actually rather where the bomb is. So let's grab this go to block. Just have it go to wherever the bomb was, just like how the bomb originally went to wherever the player was, and then also show itself. So we want this to be hidden at first and only show itself when it receives this explosion chain message. So at the very beginning of the game, when the green flag is first clicked, we want this to be hidden. So go to the purple look section and grab hide. So when the green flag is clicked, it hides itself. That's at the very start of the game. And then it just stays hidden until it receives this explosion chain until it goes to the bomb, switches to the first costume, and then starts doing all those next costumes. And then after all of this, we want it to hide itself. But of course, the problem here is this explosion one sprite will be exactly where the bomb is, and we want it to be slightly off. Like if you see in this original game when we set off the bomb, the secondary explosions, they're a little bit offset. We can do that by just adding some code here that says, well, let's have this bomb point in a random direction. So let's have it point in direction, and we need a random number here instead of just 90. So go to the green operator section. Let's grab this pick random. Instead of 1 to 10, we want it to point in any direction. So the direction, as you can see right here, can be anywhere from negative 180 all the way up around to positive 180. So that's what we'll set here. Anywhere between negative 180 degrees and 180 degrees. And then once it's pointing in that direction, we'll just have it move maybe about 20 steps in that direction, wherever it's facing. So that'll have it be 20 steps away from the initial explosion. So let's click on the green flag and click on set or space. Yeah, and you can see that second explosion was slightly off from the first explosion. So that's kind of nice. In fact, we want to have multiple chain explosions, so we can have just all of this code inside of a repeat loop and just have it run twice. So I'm going to take this point and direction, set it off to the side. Let's add a repeat block. Just have it repeat twice. So now let's test that out. Clicking on space, there's a three second delay. Yeah, that's nice. There was a second 
chain explosion right there. So now let's just go ahead and duplicate these explosion sprites. When we test it out, now I'll have three of these explosions coming off. That was pretty good. You can see there was a lot of overlap though, so it'd be nice if we could have these explosions go in different directions. We can do that just by putting a different range for each of these point and direction blocks. So for explosion one, let's have it be anywhere between negative 180 and negative 60 degrees. And then for explosion two, just have it anywhere between negative 60 degrees and positive 60 degrees. And explosion three can be anywhere between 60 degrees and 180 degrees. So when we test that out, this will give us a bit more evenly spread out secondary explosions. Yeah, that's kind of nice. In fact, you could even just set all of these to something really crazy like 20 instead of just two. That'll create a huge chain of explosions everywhere. You probably don't want that though because remember once we're done with this game you can also blow up yourself so let's just set all of these back to two. So you've probably noticed that the cat isn't dying when the cat gets exploded by its own bombs so let's add that code that will cause a game over if the cat gets hit by the bomb blast. So we can do that by noticing that Right here, for these explosions, there's a sort of yellow and red color. We can just detect if the cat's ever touching that red or yellow color, and if so, we'll just cause a game over event to happen. So, in the script section, let's go all the way down here. In fact, I want this explosion to show up on the screen real quickly, so I'll just temporarily grab this show block and double click it to run it. Oh, let me also grab this. Go to player so it shows up right there. Okay, that's good. Get rid of this. So I want to set this up so that if the cat is touching, uh, like say this main yellow and red color right here. So if the cat is touching either of those, let's broadcast a game over message. So in the yellow control category, I'll grab this if block. Be sure to put it outside of this if key s pressed block. We don't want it inside there. We want it outside and after it. So if it's touching the yellow color or the red color, which means we need to get an or block from the green operator section, then in light blue sensing, we can grab these touching color blocks. So let's see, if the cat is touching either the color yellow, make it this darker yellow color, or if it's touching the color red right here, then in that case we'll broadcast a game over message. So click on the events category. Let's add this broadcast and wait block. And we want to add a new message. So click on the black triangle and then select new message. This will be a game over message. Let's add code for what the cat does when there's a game over. Grab this when I receive block. When the cat receives a game over message, we'll have, well, let's see, what did the cat do in the original game? I'll just blow myself up real quick. Oh, okay, the cat just started spinning around saying, ack. So we can do that, go to the purple look section, and we'll grab this purple say block, we'll say ack, and then we need to set the rotation style back to that all around style so that the cat can spin around. So that's in the dark blue motion category down here at the bottom. Set rotation style to all around, and then go ahead and grab this turn to the right except we want this to happen multiple times, so in the yellow control section we'll grab this repeat block and say we'll just have this do 40 turn to the right by, well let's make it 35 degrees, that'll be pretty fast. And then after it's done spinning around we'll end the program with this stop all block. 
since the yellow and red color here that will trigger whoops that will trigger the game over broadcast can happen from either the bomb or any of the explosion sprites this should work so I'm gonna click this and let's try this out again so if I set the bomb and I'm nice and far away nothing happens but if the cat's close enough yep then the cat spins around and then stops the program. You can see the red stop sign is highlighted. That's pretty good. Okay, let's add those crab monsters now. So click on the Choose Sprite from Library button down here. Go to the Animals category and let's select Crab. So, whoa, first things first, this crab is way too big. So we're going to need to select the Shrink tool and shrink that crab down. So the very start of the program, let's grab this when green flag is clicked. Now these crabs will disappear whenever we blast them with the bomb, so we'll need to have them show up. But also, we want them to start off at their home bases, wherever these X's are. So I'm going to move this crab right here and go to the dark blue motion category and grab this X, Y block because the X and Y will be set to this crab's current position. And actually, I'll put that before the show block. And at the very start of the game, we don't want the, cra the crabs immediately moving around. That'll be a little too fast for the player. So let's add a two second delay from the yellow category and this wait block and just say, wait two seconds. And then we'll have it enter the forever loop where the crab starts moving around. So these crabs have kind of a weird spasticky movement. So here's that two second delay. They just sort of head in a straight line and they're also blocked by these blue walls so sometimes they just keep running into the wall right here but sometimes if they go straight up down left or right then they can immediately cover a lot of ground so let's add that code in what they do is they point themselves in a random direction so let's go to the dark blue motion category grab this point and direction and we'll need this to be a random direction so from the green operator section grab pick random and we'll just make this the full range of any direction from negative 180 degrees to 180 degrees and after that we want them to start moving maybe six steps of course we want multiple move six steps so set that off to the side instead we'll put a repeat block there and maybe just have this 20 times we'll repeat it, maybe 30 times. Actually, let's make this repeat a random number of times. Go back to the green operator section, put a pick random, and between 20 and 30 times, the crab will move six steps in some direction. So let's click on the green flag and see what this looks like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, hey. Well, First things first, we want to set the rotation style of these crabs to don't rotate. That way they'll always be upright. And also, we should add a next costume after that move, because the crabs also have two costumes that they can switch between. So we also need to add code that will prevent the crab from walking into this blue area. We can do we can use similar code that the cat has, just add an if block. And if that crab is touching this blue color, so if touching color, set it to this blue wall color, then we want to undo this move six steps. So we can have it move negative six steps instead. And we can see, yeah, this crab is always moving in some random direction. So a lot of times the crab is just kind of getting stuck, but every once in a while it'll shoot straight up, down, left, or right, and can really sneak up on you really quickly. So let's add a check that if this crab is touching the player, then we'll just have the crab say, I got you. So grab this if block, put it outside 
or actually inside the repeat block because we while it's moving around we also want to constantly check if it's touching the player we can grab that touching block from the light blue sensing category so if touching the player then the crab can say I got you so in the purple look section let's say I got you and also broadcast that uh, game over message so broadcast and wait game over and meanwhile we also want to add code where the the crab checks if it's been hit by an explosion so we're gonna borrow some code from the cat sprite scroll down here and grab this if block we'll just right click right here and then select duplicate set it off to the side right here and we can copy this block over to the crab sprites code by dragging it over there and so now it's copied right here so let's just delete it from the cat sprite because we don't need this code just lying around then on the crab sprite we can just move this down right here underneath that if touching player block so we don't want the game to be over if we blow up one of the crabs that's actually one of the things we want to have happen so first uh, we want to increase the score and we don't actually have a score variable yet so let's create that now so click on the orange data section then click on make a variable we'll just say score and make sure it's for all sprites and we want the score to be zero at the start of each game so let's go to the stage uh, script section Let's add this when green flag is clicked. And then from the orange data section, grab this set score to zero. That'll reset the score back to zero each time the program starts. And now when we have the crab get blown up by, and then we can detect that if it's touching the yellow or red color, then we'll change score by one just to add one point. And then at this point, the crab should disappear because it's been blown up, so it'll hide itself. But we also want to have more than just these four crabs that we'll have when we duplicate this crab sprite three more times. We want these crabs to sort of blow up and then after a while reappear and it'll look like a brand new crab has spawned at these X marks on the screen. So right after it's hidden itself, we'll just have the crab go back to that original XY block that it came from. So remember it went to negative 20554 I'm going to grab a, another xy go to block and set it to negative 204, 54. Was that it? Oh, negative 205, 54. Negative 205, 54. So it goes back home. It's still hidden, and we want it to slowly fade back into existence. And I'll show you what I mean. Back here on the original game, when we blew up these crabs, oh, easier said than done. Maybe I should edit that part out. Let me let me try that again. Green flag. You can see when I blow up these crabs, theoretically blow up these crabs. This is going to take about 20 or 30 takes, isn't it? Yeah. You can see once I blow up the crab, it disappears, and then after a few seconds, it'll slowly fade back in at its home X. So we can do that in our program. So after it goes back to its home X, we'll set the ghost effect to 50, and that'll give it a semi-transparent ghostly look. And that's in the purple look section. You can see there's a block that says set effect, We'll grab that and put it after go to XY. We want to set the ghost effect, so click on the black triangle and select ghost. We'll just set this to 50%. So this will make it look halfway invisible or somewhat transparent. And then we'll just have it slowly, we'll just slowly decrease the ghost effect so that the crab starts coming into existence more and more. So let's grab this repeat block because we're going to repeat this five times and each time we're going to 
change the ghost effect by negative 10. So we're decreasing its transparency and making it more and more solid. We don't want this to happen all at once because this repeat five will do this pretty fast. So let's add a short weight. Maybe just add this weight right here. Maybe wait just 0 0.4 seconds each time. And after that, the program will just go back to the very start of this repeat loop and then the crab will start moving around again. So let's test this out. I'm going to move this score somewhere where it's not covering up everything. Okay, click on the green flag and set the bomb right there. Yeah, now the crab's going to be gone for, they'll be hidden. Whoops, I forgot to add the code that makes the crab show up again. Should close that right there. Also, I don't want the crab to immediately start coming back, so we need to add a maybe wait five seconds right here. So be sure to add that wait block. I completely forgot about that. Um, right before it has this ghost effect set to 50. And also before we can even see that, we'll need to have this, or actually just after setting the ghost effect to 50, we'll need to have the crab show itself again. So let me try this out. Set the bomb right there. So now it's waiting five seconds. It's already hidden itself. It's increased the score by one and it's slowly coming back. And once it's all the way back, then I'll start moving around again. So that's it for all the crab code. Now just to have multiple enemies, we can just duplicate these sprites. So let's create four crabs and they'll have all the exact same code, including what their home location is. So actually what we want to do is just set these crabs up everywhere. Ooh, this is kind of a tight fit for these crabs. I might want to go to the stage and maybe just make this a little bit wider. Just right there, maybe. That looks good. Okay, back to the crab. I'm going to set all of these crabs one at each X. Hmm, this one's kind of big too. I'll just have to select the rectangle tool and just overlap right there. I mean, that's too big. I should just reduce the size of all of these blue sections. So after I've set these crabs right by their home X, so you can see the X, Y coordinates for right here will also be automatically set in the center part for this go to X, Y. So I can use either of these pairs of numbers because they're the same ones. So X for this crab should be 168 and 133. So 168 and oh, 131. Remember, we have to do it in two places for each sprite. So here, this should be 168 and 131. Let's go to crab three, which is down here. Its home is at negative 77 and negative 154. And this will be different on yours because you won't have the exact same background as me. But as long as you just copy these numbers from right here, oops completely forgot about the second area. There's a second block that I need to change. Negative 77, negative 154. And then the fourth crab, we'll just again copy these numbers from right here. 56 and negative 74. 56 and negative 74. All right, that should be it for all the crabs. Let's click on the green flag and see if this program works. Yeah, and if the crab touches the cat, the crab says, I got you, and causes the game over broadcast to happen. Hmm. 
that was kind of weird. The cat wasn't going into the game over. So I think what's happening is that that broadcast keeps happening. Oh, wait, no, that was... Maybe we'll just set this to 20 instead, so that's not rotating so often. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's test this out. Green flag. So touching the crab, that works. And blowing yourself up also works. And now let's see if we can test and successfully blow up these crabs. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe I have to get a little bit closer. A little bit. Oh. Try that again. Oh, what's happening is that the red color of the explosion is the same color as the red color of the crab. So when the crabs touch each other, they actually kill each other off, which is not what we want to have happen at all. Let me go back and change this to a different color. So let me just grab the show block and also switch costume to maybe costume five. So I want to have a slightly different red color. We have this yellow color and then this also this darker red color. I'll have to change that on the crabs as well. Okay, let's try that out again. So, cat dies when it touches the crab. And the cat also dies when it touches the explosion. That works. Okay, now hopefully let's see if I can try blowing up one of these crabs. Yep, all right, and the score increased by one. There's a five second wait, and then the crab slowly fades back into existence. Well, well that's kind of weird. You can see that I can still move for a bit, even after I've died. So we don't want that to happen. So instead, let's go back here, and let's create a variable that will keep track of if the player is alive or not. So go to the orange data section and click on make a variable. We'll just call this is player alive. And we'll just make this for all sprites. So the very start of the game, let's go to the stage, the backdrop sprite, and just like we have set score to zero here, let's grab another block that says set is player alive to yes. And then we only want these, we only want the player to be able to move around if the player is currently alive. So we'll just move all of this out of the forever loop for right now and instead inside of there put if and then we want it to only execute this code if the player is alive so let's grab this operator section grab equals and then from the orange data section grab if is player alive equals yes then the player can press the a the WASD keys to move around Let's see. Oh, I don't want this right here. I'll just put that outside there because this doesn't really depend on if the player is alive or not. And then, once the game over message is broadcasted, we'll just set player alive to no. So once it gets set to no here, then whenever this player starts pressing any of the WASD keys, this condition will be false, so it'll skip over checking if the WASD key is pressed, and it won't actually move. So we can test that out now. Yeah, you can see as soon as I touched the crab, I wasn't able to move anymore. So that's the entire game. We uh, have these cool explosions happening. It's kind of nice. You know, you never know when the crabs will shoot out going straight. and 
you want to try to get close enough to them to set the bomb, but also need to get far away from them. You can easily trap yourself in between a bunch of crabs and end up blowing yourself up. But uh, go ahead and have fun playing this. If you have any questions, be sure to leave, a, leave some comments in the comment section or just go ahead and email me. But thanks for watching.